please welcome Brighton Godfrey. Thank you. Okay, hello. Uh, my name is Brighton Godfrey. I am uh, co-founder and CTO of Veriflow. I'm also a professor at the University of Illinois. Um, and so this story starts with something that's probably familiar to us all at this point, which is the complexity of networks. And that's complexity not only in scale, but in types of uh, protocols, in number of vendors, in types of technology, in more and more layers. And in many cases, you know, some of that technology that's now available is helping us automate, helping us virtualize, move to the cloud. But at the same time, it can actually increase complexity of this overall system in many ways uh, and maybe make visibility more opaque. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the way I like to think about this is that what a enterprise, modern enterprise has to do is it's essentially building something of the complexity of a software, a uh, piece of software, a piece of distributed software, both designing it, building it, and operating it. And that's far more than, you know, a human can reason about. So we began a line of research uh, about you know, uh, six or seven years ago at, at, uh, in, in our lab at the university, thinking about this problem and thinking about, you know, if we look to other complex engineered systems that really have to be dependable, how do you, how do you build them? How do you make them uh, reliable? And, you know, the direction we looked to was this, uh, class of techniques called formal verification, which has been very successful in multiple industries in aerospace, in microprocessor manufacturing, and in um, increasingly in software, where, for example, NASA has been leader in formal verification of the flight software for Mars rovers. So I'm not sure if you've seen the movie The Martian, um, but without giving away too much, uh, Matt Damon is stuck on Mars. And he has to dust off the old rover at one point in order, in order to be able to communicate back home. And the thing works, even after many years, right? And that's pretty representative of the fact that you can build very reliable software if you give it the right uh, techniques. So what's exciting here is that um, you know, we're, we're bringing formal verification, which is this mathematical analysis of a system to determine if it meets a property of interest, bringing that to network infrastructure for the first time. So um, let's just be concrete about a def definition here. Network verification is a process of proving whether some abstraction of the network actually meets the network-wide intent. So basically, does reality match the intent? Okay. What might the intent mean? Well, that could be specified at multiple levels, but this critical service that I care about should be available from the internet. Or no user should be able to reach this particular service unless it goes through a firewall. Uh, or this group of routers should have consistent behavior, maybe even a higher level specification. I want my data center to be resilient. Okay? Um, so that's the intent. Now, how can we understand whether we're actually achieving it? That can be a hard thing to do because of the complexity of components that we're dealing with. So let's just walk through very simply um, a little bit about how you build a network verification system. And then a little later in the talk, what I'm going to spend time on is how it looks like in the real world. So, and what we've learned from it in the real world. So the first step, if you want to understand the network in, in a very accurate way, is you need to, to know what's out there. You need to collect state, configs, data from the network itself and uh, normalize it into a single representation. And then you can build a model. Okay? And I want to be clear here about what verification is and what it isn't. So um, what verification isn't is looking at the past. It's not looking at flow. It's not looking at ongoing or historical flow. Okay? What it's doing, and this is what makes it you know, really powerful is it's basically predicting the future. It's saying, what could happen in this network? Okay? What is everything that could happen? And then, once you know that, once you have this model of everything that could happen, you can verify whether the intent matches reality. Now, 
this is a simple three-step process. Everything with three steps is actually very simple, right? Um, but not really. There are challenges at every step of this way that make it a really, you know, very interesting and challenging technical problem. I want to highlight just a, a few of those. Let's talk about that first step of collecting and normalizing state in the network. One of the key difficulties that network and security engineers need to deal with is the fact that there is this huge heterogeneity of kinds of devices and vendors and protocols and technologies that exist. We need to be able to take all of that variety and somehow represent it in a single abstract format, right? A single abstraction that, that covers everything from, you know, like a, a Cisco box that hasn't even been rebooted in 10 years, which we see in, in deployments, all the way to, you know, the newest virtual network, right, in a single abstraction. And that's a difficult thing to do today because there is no unifying API or unifying... Um, you know, description language for what the gear is doing in a, in a very broad and consistent way. There are some efforts towards that, like OpenConfig, but today it's still something that takes a lot of work. Now, having, you know, put in that engineering effort, it then becomes a very power, powerful thing because you can build the model, right? Now you have a model of the network and you can model and predict network-wide behavior. Now, here the challenge is really computational. I said, you know, what verification has to do is it has to predict all possible behavior. So how, how big of a space is that, right? Networks are large. Let's just take a sim simple example here. If you wanted to explore the space of all possible packets that you could inject into your network, how big would that be, right? Not just the single ping or the single trace route, but everything that could happen. Well, it's exponential in the number of bits in the header, and even in a very simple, you know, um, overly simple, you know, kind of example here, let's say the Ethernet and the IPv4 header. And then you could inject any of those packets at, uh, let's say, 10,000 locations, 10,000 ports, depending on the size of your network. Obviously, it might be more or less. But if we take that example, then we're talking about something like 10 to the 95 possibilities. Let's put that in perspective. 10 to the 95 is, is right there. And um, the number of grains of sand on Earth's beaches is about 10 to the 21. And the number of atoms in the observable universe is about 10 to the 80. Okay? So we're talking about a, literally an astronomical number here. You're not going to be able to go through each one of those possibilities and simulate it one at a time. This is where the mathematical analysis comes in. Um, and what we developed originally in, uh, in our research work was a way of reasoning about the structure of the network using what we call equivalence classes, reasoning, reasoning about groups of packets that provably will have identical behavior throughout the network, and then building that into basically a custom graph database that represents not only the structure of the network, but the function of the network. And then you can query this graph, graph database and ask it questions about what could happen. So that's giving just a little bit of insight, and you can read our research papers if you'd like to know more or chat with me after, but a little bit of insight about what the challenge is there in building that truly predictive model. Once you have it, then you get to what really matters, which is the intent. That's what you care about. Verifying, you know, is my data center resilient? So this is a very exciting thing. And, you know, in, in this whole space of challenges of building verification, there's been a lot of exciting research work that's pushing forward the boundaries of what you can do. You know, everything from, um, you know, verification in real time to reasoning about uncertainty in the network to verifying more complex software components and, and uh, elements in the network. Uh, so there's a broad range of interesting work uh, in the academic and the industry research communities that are pushing that forward. But the thing that's even more exciting for me is that in a pretty short amount of time, just a few years since some of the early research papers, this technology has been deployed in real networks. And so what I want to chat about for the rest of the, uh, my uh, time here is five insights that we've learned in deploying network verification 
in the real world. So uh, the number one, the first thing that we learned is that the need is real. You know, I didn't really know what to expect personally as someone coming out of the research community. You know, sure, you can verify network mathematically in theory. You know, do you discover anything in practice? And the answer is yes. These are very complex systems that are very hard for people to understand. So um, put some numbers on it from a survey of uh, over 300 IT professionals. 59% said that in their networks, the growth in complexity has actually led to more frequent outages. And that's compounded because of this constant drumbeat of change, right? And networks trying to be more agile, trying to, to keep up with the business needs which are moving more quickly. So it might be hundreds of changes a month or even many thousands of changes a month, like 22,000 in, uh, in DIS's network. So you have a complex system rapidly changing to meet the business needs, and it's rapidly being changed largely with manual processes. So the, the most common method of understanding whether the network is doing the right thing, 69% of the respondents in the survey, was manual checks. That means pings, trace routes, going to a service to see if it's still operational. And the second most common is monitoring, looking at what's happened in the recent past or ongoing. So manual checks are giving no guarantees, and monitoring is, you know, basically too late. Right? It's already after users are experiencing the problems or it's after attackers have exploited a vulnerability. So we have to be able to do better than that. Um, now, in order to build a system that does better, let's talk about what information we need. Uh, and what we've found is that you need multiple layers of information. I put that, that definition up on the slide a few slides ago of what network verification is. It's proving whether an abstraction in the network satisfies the intent. Well, what is the abstraction? There's multiple levels of inf layers of information within the network. There's configuration, there's control software, there's the data plane state that's generated, and then there's the actual packet processing. And you can gather information from any of these and learn from it. And really, all of it together the com is in its combined effect producing the reality of the network, right? The configs are important because they tell you, you know, what was, uh, what was the, a particular device was instructed to do. But then there's millions or tens of millions of lines of vendor code. There's distributed routing protocols and protocol state. There's forwarding state. There's physical uh, components that, you know, that may be uh, in a working or partially working or non-working state. All of this is producing the reality of the network. So what we found is that it is very important to get that accuracy about the reality to understand the data plane state as well. And let me give you an example of a use case from uh, an enterprise customer that we're working with. Um, <clears throat> Like many other enterprises, they will update their software occasionally on, on the devices. And w when they update the software, 